welcome to the Spoken Word Poetry Podcast. Listen in as poet and artist Ariana R. Cherry features words written from her heart and performed from her soul. Every week, you will hear original poetry spoken through performance art and storytelling. Listen weekly on Anchor, Spotify, Apple iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Truth, stories, and poetry. Exactly what the soul needs. Welcome to an episode of Spoken Word Poetry Podcast. Today, I am doing a series, again, usually called Meet the Artist, where you can meet other artists and writers, singers, any way that has any kind of creative contribution. And today, I have Ron Fitzgerald, who is known as a Gothic Illusionist. Now, you wonder, why would I have a Gothic Illusionist on a poetry podcast? Well, one of the first things I've noticed about Ron Fitzgerald, when I was at one of his first shows, he has these little spoken bits. I almost thought it was a different kind of poetry before he would do his illusions and all. I don't want to call it magic because I think he may not like that. Um, but they're illusions that he does. But he always would have almost like these little sayings. And that's one of the first things that caught me when I started watching his shows. So we're going to actually talk to Ron about these. And also he has music with all of his acts as well. Um, so today I have Ron Fitzgerald. And hello, Ron. Ariana, greetings from the realm. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for being on Spoken Word Poetry Podcast. I tried to explain uh, why I had you, because I've already had Josh, uh, my boyfriend, who used to host with me on Night Moves Radio, was wondering why I would have you on a, a poetry podcast. I go, well, because of these, remember those little sayings? He goes, I'm not sure that I do. I go, well, I guess I was the only one who noticed them. So Some people do, some, some people they don't. I mean, I kind of use them as really a setup or an introduction to mm-hmm. the illusions. And it's nice because some people, like you, catch that. A lot of other people just go away. And I've always, I'm glad you mentioned the music, too. I've always gotten really high marks from my audience about the music that I use. Mm-hmm. And I very carefully curate that and, and, and we will get into that as well but there is there's there's little um there's bits of poetry and and rhymes that i use it's my and i'm glad they stuck out to you as a poet yourself mm-hmm. because i wanted a different way to introduce what i'm doing because i look at it as magic and illusion to me mm-hmm. is is best when it is well and and favorite to me when it is presented as as theater and performance art because i like to do big illusions and i like that that kind of of a theatrical presentation yeah yeah Yeah, you are definitely a theatrical presentation because you you can tell that everything is well thought out and it especially the music because like when i was really watching i was watching what you were doing but i was also analyzing it because it was a little Mm -hmm. different from than what i've seen in the past because on mostly only place i'd seen quote, magic was television or maybe at little parties. Well, this was different. Not only was it gothic, but, I mean, it, there was just a different feel, and then you kind of do some theatrics with it, especially, like, your assistants and people who come mm-hmm. help. So I knew there was a difference. So when if those out there listening, if you would ever get to see Ron Fitzgerald, any of his um, shows, or he's also on YouTube, you would understand what I was talking about when you would hear see the theatrics. Well, also, don't forget to mention, I mean, part of the reason it's so theatrical, and, and I can talk about how I came around back into this space as well, but I'm also an actor. Yes, I, I yes, that's a correct. a lot of, of dark culture movies, you know, uh, dark, uh, mainly horror films and kind of sci-fi kind of stuff, spookier things, mm-hmm. and, and I'm all over that stuff, and I've been acting for the last 20 years as well, and it's because of the persona and the look and everything that I created for my stage show that actually got me invited into, you know, horror films. Oh, that's awesome. I was wondering how you got started. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, when I started many, many moons ago, uh, I, I mean, I, you know, really, you know, I'm the boy next door going horribly, horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a nice Midwestern boy, and uh, I got a box of magic when I was eight years old, and I, I got a magic kit. A lot of people had them. Uh-huh. Only a few of us going to stick with it, you know, and... <laughs> Uh, and, and but it was in the beginning, um, 
that most people looking at me now would they, they just don't they, they don't see it until I show some of the old photos or footage or something. But I mean when I started it was birds and bunnies and bad formal wear tuxedos <laughs> okay. and things. So yeah, there was I, a I'm, softer I'm, side of Ron that got it, his first start. It, it, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was it was really traditional, what I call traditional yes. magic. And that's the way I learned it and that's the way my first mentors, you know, taught me. But then I got to a point where that was no longer interesting to me or my contemporaries. So also as a kid, besides liking magic, I loved horror films, the old mm -hmm. Universal movies and stuff like that. And I loved, you know, vampires and I loved, you know, you know, haunted houses and Halloween and, you know, anything spooky. And I also love comic books and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, which is cool because now they're like all the rage in, in, oh, in entertainment movies. So I just took that stuff that I love so much because somebody said to me, they, they said, you're more interesting off stage than you are on. And that to me said, I need to change what I'm doing out there then because this just, mm -hmm. this is not going to work. <laughs> well, but probably um, because I mean, out on stage at the time, you weren't really projecting like you, who you were. Exactly. I was doing a nice family show and I was, I was basically regurgitating what I had been taught yeah. and what I had seen as classic magic mm -hmm. and at that point i said okay, this is really going to be art and, and to do something more interesting and to put my own stamp on it then i just you know i went down the dark sticky rabbit hole of you know uh all the influences all of the things that i just mentioned that i like like horror films and dark sci-fi mm -hmm. things like that the paranormal you know ghost stories you know the, the weird things and all of that kind of flooded into the show i loved uh, uh, vampires and the goth industrial underground, um, which all influenced the show, mm -hmm. you know, I immensely. And so I put all that in and I changed my persona over time. And it, uh, it then evolved, you know, and, and along the way, I, I, when I was in college, I studied theater and acting. And I studied it just specifically for the stage show, thinking that that's what I'm going to use it and that's what I want. I want those skills so I can use them for my illusion show. Of course. I never knew that later, you know, I, you know, because after that, I've worked in amusement parks for a good five, six years. And after that, I started my own cable TV show. But by that time, my persona was thoroughly, you know, transformed into this, this uh, new gothic illusion mm -hmm. that, that I was doing. And, and after that, um, I had friends come to me and and say, hey, do you want to be in my horror film? Because they love my look and everything. And I actually had the skill set from studying acting and theater in, in college mm -hmm. to, then, to using it in a show and all that live performance. And then and then a lot of on-camera work with seven years of my cable TV show, Fitzgerald Realm, which they can see on my YouTube channel. And after that, then I went into the horror films. And the first time... I got to make a horror film. I was just thrilled to be on set, and I loved it, and I continued, and that's been in the last 20 years. I've just continued to do acting alongside the uh, the Gothic Illusion mm -hmm. show. And, and, then, and then, of course, that leads to the theatricality, mm -hmm. and then, you know, things like, you know, what we're talking about with those rhyming, the, the, of the bits of poetry and everything. I wanted a different way um, to introduce things, and a lot of times I thought, something that just appealed to me was to use something a little more, I guess it gives it something a more magical and ethereal feel. It does. It feels like a story because like when you would start to say those, mm -hmm. it's like you were walking into a story because you would have that start and then you would start your act. So it did give it like a more magical, you know, like uh, storyline. Exactly, and that's exactly what I wanted because I like all that, you know, like Harry Potter and uh -huh. things like that too. And it kind of, it kind of, it kind of hints at some of that, the darker side of that. And, and and that's what I want to do because I do they they're like they are little stories they're like little vignettes every illusion kind of says something there's subcontext to those illusions mm -hmm. for me and, and and the audience is left to interpret it what they can see or not or what 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 personally appeals to them or not and you know it's like any kind of art a lot of times it is you know however you interpret it, it is is right for you if you see something in that that maybe nobody else did that's fine with me mm -hmm. you know. I have a certain, a, a certain, you know, uh, something that I'm expressing there. But if what you thought touched you in a, it, you, your own personal filter in a different way, mm -hmm. and you got something else out of it, that's great with me. Oh, so well, art, art allows people, you yeah, think in some way. totally. Well, art allows people to do that. Art has always been open for interpretation. Yes. That's what's great about it. 
Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, everyone's their own critic. Yes. You know, and that's, you know, it, it all depends on your personal filter, your personal taste and everything. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I do that. So I set it up like a story, and that's the, you know, the, the, kind of the beginning of the story, and that sets it up in a kind of a spooky, ethereal way. Mm -hmm. And and then in between the illusions, those vignettes, those stories, then I kind of step out and host more as myself. And yes. that's, that's, you know, boisterous and more fun. And I consider myself a host for my own show, my mm -hmm. own performance. Pieces. Oh, yeah. Totally. And that's kind of how it works. So, because a lot of people at one point said, well, you're going to have to be this stoic, gothic illusionist, or you're going to have to go out there and be funny, but you can't do both. Yeah, you and can. And I'm like, you know, watch <laughs> it. And I can do both just fine. Yeah, I you do. You do it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where dark, sticky fun comes from. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's meant to be provocative and sound provocative, but even that's interpretive. I uh -huh. mean, you know, it, it's open to interpretation, but it certainly sounds provocative, and, and uh, <laughs> that is by design. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone can yeah. interpret that however they want to. Uh, well, if, yeah, <laughs> I think there's a certain interpretation of that, and that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then and then other people kind of wonder about it, but it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it was a way to describe it that people kind of got. Yeah. And, and, it, and it amused them, so uh, that's great. Yeah, totally. And, you know, and that's yeah. how people know you now, dark, sticky fun. It's like your thing. Well, it is. Even my friend, Paul Osborne, who I worked with in the shows, and he, he had worked, he, he, and people in the magic industry know him. He, he published Illusion Plans, and I'm in several of his books, including his, I wrote the foreword to his last book of spooky magic called Evil Illusions. I actually, mm -hmm. you know, I was thrilled he asked me to write the foreword for that. That's cool. And I did. And he's the guy that really brought, um, Halloween to the uh, theme park industry mm -hmm. and uh, that was back in the late 80s you know when we were when I was doing that with him and I we started it and they they brought in they packaged shows and brought it in and, and brought Halloween to Six Flags over Texas and that's kind of where it started now all the parks do that mm -hmm. at Halloween but at the time not you know not many of them were but we had such a great response to it they actually the park hit capacity you know for two years running and they had to shut the gates they were so full of people the fire marshal came in and said you can't let anyone else in the park oh my god that's how successful it was oh my gosh that's awesome it was amazing, it was amazing. <laughs> i mean i was i was doing like big standalone shows outside you know like uh, you know, witch burning guillotines hanging freddy krueger things like that <laughs> and they're like you know those are like big illusions and they were outside but it's like i had thousands of people in the streets oh, wow. of the park that's amazing. You know, watching the shows, because I was up on a platform with these big illusions, and it was like these these one single, you know, kind of illusions and a presentation built around that. They had a little story to it, and uh, it, w it was great, but it's like I, I could not believe the kind of audiences it drew. And wow. it was so successful that then it, it really got franchised out, um, and the idea, you know, worked out, and after that, almost all of the parks, everybody that could, stayed open into the fall and did, you know, Fright Nights or Fright Fest or their mm -hmm. Halloween season. That's and, just and cool. And I was there at really the beginning of that. That's awesome. That's neat, like, was, how you did that. It, it, yeah, it was great fun. So, you, you, know, you know, but, but to getting back around it, you know, what, what he did, and, you know, so in his books and things mm -hmm. like that. And he said to me, he's like, you're the only guy I know that can make a career out of dark, sticky fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's where you got that. Yes. Well, that's, you know, actually a long, long time ago, like back during the cable show days, which is in the early 90s, uh -huh. I was doing a show, and, and at the time it was pre-internet, so you had to make and print physical flyers and, and distribute them. Wow. And <laughs> have your fans distribute. Oh, yeah, promoting was a nightmare then. You didn't have the internet. It was yeah, really, that's crazy. You know, it was like you were, you were, you were you know, you're getting, mobilizing yourself <laughs> and, and, and the, you know, Oh, my God, around. there was a time when the internet didn't exist. <laughs> I know. I know. Tell that to people. Well, Back before the war, yeah. the great pandemic of 2020. No kidding. <laughs> Yes, there was a there was a land. There was a long time with no internet. And damn it, I was there for some of it. Yeah, me too. And, and so we were passing out flyers, and it was a it was a club date. And at the bottom of the flyer, just for fun, I put dark, sticky summer fun. Oh my gosh! And without hesitation, and without without a, with, without any exception, when people would read that flyer and they'd hit the bottom, they'd hit that line of dark, sticky summer fun. <laughs> 
everyone would react to it. Everyone would <laughs> laugh or say, that's great, or I want some dark, sticky summer fun. So <laughs> dark, sticky summer fun became then, I'm like, okay, I got something here. And then that became dark, sticky vampire fun. Yeah. And after a while, just to, to kind of it, make it inclusive to all of uh, of the things I was doing, mm-hmm. I just cut it down. I whittled it down to just dark, sticky fun. Yeah. Is where it's at now. <laughs> and... And, 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 it, and it seems to have stuck. It resonates with the audience with what I do. So, uh, you know, they, they're they the ones. It was from the audience reaction that I knew, okay, this is, you know, they that's get so it, cool. and this is what, it's, this is what we're going to call it. Wow, call that's it. amazing. That's going to neat. Isn't it wild? The yeah. It just came from one thought that was on the bottom of a flyer. That and is. Like, but that's how you have to pay attention to your audience. So yeah. We were talking about audience feedback before. Sure. So you have to pay attention. If something resonates with them, Run with it. Run like hell with it. <laughs> of course. You got to give the audience what give, they want sometimes. Give them what they want. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. So these little stories, these little sayings, like, yes. um, how about you just, like, save, like, one of them and then kind of tell, I'll, like. Yeah, I'll give you one. And this is one I wrote, and I like it. It's on, It's even, it's so popular. It, it, it's featured in the movie as part of the storyline uh, because we wrote it in that way. And. It's uh, it, it's on on the back of some of the shirts, some of the mm-hmm. merch, and everything because people liked it so much. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it, it, it must be it must be a good piece because people actually come up and ask me. They're like, "Did you write that?" Awesome. And I'm like, "Yes, that one is mine." Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, and it's uh, this one. <clears throat> one eye sees the land of the living, the other the realm of the dead. Betwixt and between, I've always seen the dream that burns in my head. Yeah, see, and that gives it like a spooky feeling before you start. And very, very much. It, it, just, it, it makes the sense. It's, kind of, it's got, yeah, and it's got kind of the aesthetic, the, the, the feel of an incantation. Yeah. You know? Atmosphere, and that's not, the word I'm looking for. It sets an atmosphere. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and it is. It's part of the setup to that vignette that I'm about to do. And then with what you were saying about, you know, the highly curated music then mm-hmm. for that illusion and that presentation. And it kind of like it makes a theatrical piece in the show because each one is like a, a, like a like a, a piece of poetry or a painting mm-hmm. or a short story, and it and it kind of tells that in a in a visual way as well because obviously magic illusions there's things happening and you know lots of torturing lovely young ladies for the entertainment <laughs> pleasure of many things like that. <laughs> sometimes I'm getting I'm getting myself tortured by them yes. for the entertainment pleasure of many, <laughs> and uh, and it just it, it it makes for a more I, I feel more ethereal and magical way with kind of an incantation to set it up. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. Like I um, it just you about to be present. Like for people listening, if you haven't seen a show, just mm-hmm. just you know, it kind of kind of starts up. You've got the scene already in front of you with his props and everything, and then they kind of have like a little bit of background music rolling, but like not quite loud yet and then ron comes on the stage and then he starts with his like incantations and then like you know and then we get the music really going then it goes into action for like the whole act so it all comes together it, it's neat how it, i would get i would get goosebumps talking about that that's weird okay um, I'm, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad somebody's paying attention it's nice to know that that resonates with you and and and, and other parts of the audience because yeah. it, it that's been part of my process is to put together a presentation for uh, the illusions that you know in a style that's that's different from anything else out there and mm-hmm. i think i can you know you know securely say that that I, i've done that i i, I put together my own kind of presentation for it that nobody else does mm-hmm. now these incantations look so when like a poet gets ready to write sometimes i can't just sit down and say okay i'm gonna write a poem well it doesn't happen that way so it just bits and pieces come to me and like, you know, I'll sit and write about it or I'll be inspired from something and write it down. So when you yeah. have your incantations, did it come to you or did you sit down and think of like your act that you were writing it for or how did they come along? A lot of times it is. It's like, you know, I'll have something, you know, for an act and I know I want to create something specifically for that. Sometimes I'll just write something and I've used it, I've moved it around on several different mm-hmm. things so, you know i can use it in in different places like in even in a certain show i'll use that same incantation on a different piece of magic or illusion you know on the if i say the the one i usually use it on is not in that particular show for mm-hmm. one reason or another because i've changed the set list sure and and i still want that that piece to be in 
you know, it's like I change up the music sometimes depending on what I'm doing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and use that. And so sometimes it is very specifically generated and created for a specific mm -hmm. uh, vignette illusion. And, and then other times I've, I've created it, you know, kind of specifically for something, but it, it's also just it, it, something that, that could work on several different pieces. Sure. And I've moved that around. So but a lot of times it's like, you know, this decapitation uh, from the head mover illusion oh, yeah, is uh -huh. kind of where I use that, that piece there. Sure. Um, so you basically have to actually sit down and really write. So like, see, it's, sometimes it's hard for me just now, like articles and you know, nonfiction stuff, sure, I can sit down and write. Mm -hmm. But creative stuff, there's a process. But so it's, for yeah. me, what you do would be a little hard just to sit down and, like, start writing something. So do you have to get yourself in a frame of mind to, to write those if you know you're writing them for a certain set? You get drunk on, on, on absinthe, and then you do a little ayahuasca, <laughs> and then you sit, no, I, you, I, not, <laughs> it's not that involved. <laughs> it's not that involved. Okay. Um, no, you just kind of you meditate on it, you muse mm -hmm. on it a bit, and sometimes it, it, it and you get started in you, certain phrases, certain things will work, mm -hmm. you know. And I guess maybe because you know Fitzgerald, I'm you know I've got Irish blood in me, so yeah, I, I like I like the limerick. I've used the limerick yeah. kind of style. They are limerick for, styles. They are before. Yeah, some of them are, and some of them aren't. Yeah, um, and some are different, and, and some are not mine. I mean, I I you know I quote Shakespeare from Macbeth before the castle illusion. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I use a, a piece that I, I, I can't really remember where it came from, but I've got another piece that I learned off a, uh, it was off an old LP, a record. Oh, five, neat. Oh, a my A record gosh. that my, my mom uh, bought me when I was a kid. That's awesome. She knew I liked all the spooky stuff. And it was it was a, a whole album of Vincent Price. Oh, I mean, that's awesome. Stories oh, my and gosh. These little these little rhyming bits, these incantations, oh. and the one that, there's one that I memorized Neat. that I use in the show before the, the voodoo piece, uh -huh. uh, and I'll, I can do that one for you. Okay, yeah. I, I love that one, too. Uh, grant that no hobgoblins fright me, no hungry devils rise up and bite me, no urchins, elves, or drunkards, ghosts shove me against walls or posts. Oh, grant I may no black thing touch. Though many men love to meet such. <laughs> that sounds like And Vincent I learned Price. that from freaking Vincent Price. That is, and that's, that's awesome. I love it. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's great. He's, and I he's mean, classic. That's classic yeah. horror right there. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, that goes right into, you know, horror royalty. So, yes. Like, you know, you can't go wrong with that. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Josh would absolutely love, because he is a fan of Vincent Price. So, uh, yes. Huge. Yes. And I, 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 I met his daughter, Victoria, several times. Oh, yes, and, so uh, did we. She I, was I, super I, nice. Yes, isn't she? She's, yeah. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous person. Yes. Lovely, lovely person. And she's kind of like really the, the face of and keeping her father's memory well, most and definitely. alive at, at the horror conventions with the horror audience. And yes. Everything. She kind of runs that for the family and, you know, heads up the merch and everything. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, gotten uh, the Vincent Price cookbook. Oh, yes, that's the year, I had, yeah, I remembered that. Yeah, and I had, she signed it for me, which so was cool. great. And, um, and then I had to run off and go on stage. I left the, the bloody book at her booth with her. Oh, she no. She was nice enough to come over and bring it back over Aww. to me because she knew I had to go do the show. And that yeah. was at Dark History and Horror Convention. Yeah, I think that was the first one that we had ever been to, actually, when we yeah. met Victoria. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that was that was Josh's. If he couldn't meet Vincent, like meeting Victoria was like the next best thing for him. That's like yes. where we went. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that, it, yes, absolutely. It, it, it is. It is very much like that. You know. Yeah. Meeting the flesh of his flesh. It's like, yes. You know, <laughs> and, and she's so awesome, and you know, and I, I also got I met her at a book signing in the, in in Chicago mm -hmm. once, uh, where she it was she wrote a book about. Uh, her life with her father and everything Aww. and that's great too wow. and so i've seen her at multiple events and of course we chat every now and then online and uh, you know but she's awesome so oh, yeah uh, that's that's something i picked up and i i loved it you know growing up mm -hmm. because it was vincent and then i listened to it so much i memorized it and 
So and did, I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put that in the show. So did Victoria my, my... recognize that? Did she, was she, did she, was she there for your show? Did she know that you I don't used know her dad's? Got, so we, hadn't, we hadn't specifically talked about it, so uh-huh. I don't know if she would have recognized it or not. I yeah. Mean, it was one, it was one kind of reading a uh, piece of poetry, uh, an incantation on one of those albums that, that came out, I think in like the 70s. Gotcha. And uh, so I don't know if she would have recognized it uh, or not. Yeah, that's true. I, I, you know, I, I'd love to ask her, but I think she still had to tend her booth, so I'm mm-hmm. not even sure she got to see the show. I know she heard the show. She mm-hmm. wasn't far from the stage, yeah. but she was kind of around the corner back behind in, in the next aisle. Sure. So I don't think she got to see much of it. Yeah. <clears throat> so cause that'd be cool for her to know that somebody had, you know, using her father's, like, poetry, you know, I mean... You think yeah. that would be kind of neat. Well, I don't think I don't think Vincent wrote it. I think somebody else wrote it. It's old, but it's it's public domain, so oh, people course. use it. And so I, I got gotcha. you. I then you know re re uh, you know reiterated it in Great. my own way. Cool. But, you know, uh, so because I think it goes back to you know a much older older uh, you know poet from the UK. Oh yeah. Well, that's and what I you don't can do remember with that. who it is off the top of my head. Yeah, public domain stuff, though, I mean, that's what you can do with that, though. You can, like, totally make it your own to where it works with what you're doing. Well, it is, and there's, like, those things, and then those, you know, to hear him just kind of, you know, go through these read ghost stories with that wonderful voice of his, it's so perfect. And and also, he was doing, like, actual, like, you know, witchcraft incantations. Like, there's a whole spell he reads on how to turn yourself into a werewolf. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow. So there's probably like oh, yeah. little boys and girls, you know, maybe not little, but, you know, and they're thinking, we're going to listen to this and we're going to turn ourselves into werewolves. Exactly. Come on, kids, <laughs> gather around the stereo, you know, bring yourself some, some blood and some, you know, lamb fat and, uh, and uh, you know, and a pelt, and we're going to turn ourselves into werewolves. Come on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a party that would be! <laughs> oh, so great! I'll have to play that for you sometime. Yeah, that'd so be funny. Great. That oh, Josh would love to hear that. He'd be Josh. Would be like, yeah, I, I, maybe I can be a werewolf. <laughs> no, just joking. And actually, you can go to his website, and they've got an archive of a lot of that audio. Oh, really? Right on on the Vincent Price website. Oh, I think it's VincentPrice.com. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Sure. But go in there and go into the audio archives on there. A lot of that stuff's in there. It is awesome. Oh, I will have to show Josh. He he. He loves He'll Vincent love it. Price. Will love it. Yes, yeah. he loves Vincent yeah. Price. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. awesome. That's so cool. So we've talked about incantations and you know, and like the bits of poetry and stuff. And then you have music also, which I will have after this episode that our listeners will be able to listen to. And you, 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 you yeah. say you choose carefully on the music. And obviously, with some of them, it sounds like you may have had it written just for your shows. Right. Well, some of this, some of the music by because I mean, if people want to see what I do and want to see examples of how I present the magic, I made a movie called Dark Realm, which That's is the on, best way to watch it. out there. You can see on on Amazon Prime Video in the U.S. and the U.K. and other places. We're mm-hmm. actually on a, a platform in Italy just picked up Dark Realm. Oh, so Italy picked it up. That's on, great. Yeah, it, it's still filtering out there, and we're still going on, you know, around the world, and and we're still pushing it out into new, new new platforms, new spaces. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's easiest for most people to find it, especially in the, in the States and in the UK, uh, on, on Amazon Prime Video. And, you know, Ron, you know, look look under my name, look under Ron Kachil, and but just look for, you know, a horror movie called Dark Realm. And, uh, and that is largely, it's a mixture, an artistic mix of my, of live performance, my live stage performance, and it's interwoven with uh, a horror story narrative. So it's a horror film, and it's 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 a live performance. So it's almost like concert film, and a horror film blended together. And it's like sixty five percent of my stage work, but shot specifically and really nice, you know, for for uh, you know for uh, an on camera presentation in front of a live audience, so you mm-hmm. know it's it's genuine. Not like a lot of these guys who, you know, on television really heavily edit their stuff. Yeah. And it's this is edited, but it's presented in front of a live audience. I wanted to give you an experience of a theatrical, a theater experience where you had the best seat in the house, and, and this is what you would see if you were actually there in the audience, and it is. Mm-hmm. And if you come and see me live, you'll see the same kind of thing. Yeah, I've I've seen yeah. it a couple times, and I actually got the DVD from you so many years ago. 
And, awesome. and so, uh, yeah, we traded. I gave you uh, a book of my Twisted Past poetry. You yes. gave me a DVD. <laughs> yes, we did. It was a good trade. Yes, it was. A great trade. So, so yeah. So, you know what it's like. You've yeah. seen Dark Realm. And that's, as far as, you know, anybody out there in the audience that really wants to see my work, and, you know, especially right now where you're, you know, we're all consuming all this content at home, go on there and take a look at, at, uh, at Dark Realm on Amazon, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see and hear some of these things that, that we're doing. You can see that how I set it up with the incantation and then go in and, and, and hear all the music. So the music, then, is, is heavily curated. A lot of times, I, you know, in my, when I'm in a, in the movie, I had to replace a lot of music. I use a lot of, like, big-name music and, and artists that would be recognizable to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, you know, David Bowie, The Sisters of Mercy, Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, and and, and others, you know? Um, a, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and in music venues, they have a music license and everything in different places, or if it's television, so when I've been on, on national television or something, uh, they all have music licenses, and, and, and it's, uh, you know, you're allowed to use that music. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time, I do. But for Dark Realm, since we were going to patch, you couldn't sell it, I had to curate other music oh, yeah. and, and change it, a lot of it, for, for those presentations that, mm -hmm. you know, people would see one thing live, and they'll see it. And everybody was like, wow, we don't miss the big name music because what you picked was so perfect. And oh, yeah, it, was, of, it fit your scenes perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I was thrilled that it worked that great. But I have a good ear for it. I know what works for me and the show. Mm -hmm. So I knew how to pick things. So it, it, and in that, it has been a, a bit of both. I just try. I have a really good feel for, and, and, and like I say, heavily curating the music. So what I'm choosing musically, no matter the artist, fits the vibe I'm putting out there on the presentation. You know, like whatever, whatever I'm trying to express with that illusion, that's why that's a big part of why I'm picking that kind of music. And sometimes I want just a certain energy, mm -hmm. a certain feel oh, in course. that song itself. Of course, music you know, can set the atmosphere. Whether it's more up or more down, more creepy, mm -hmm. maybe some of it's a little on the ro you know gothic romantic side too. But you know, a lot of it's you know got a lot of power in the music too, oh, yeah. and what it's doing, and that helps drive everything along. And it really, it really worked so well with the audience too. They they respond well to that. They want mm -hmm. something that's kind of kind of up, and and uh, the, it's a powerful presentation that way. But in Dark Realm, we you know had to go in, and I I swapped a lot of things out for independent artists. Like the uh, you know a lot of it, the the soundtrack. There's a soundtrack also on Amazon and other places called Realm by a band called House Made of Dawn out of L.A. And they did the majority of song contributions, and they also did the soundtrack. Hmm. And, yes. uh, and that's one of them that you I, gave me, right? In the one that I'll be playing. Both, in of, those, House both of, of those songs I sent you that you'll hear later in the show. Okay. Are by House Made of Dawn. All right. One of them is called You Woke the Demon, and that's right out of the movie. And it is in, um, in, in either on that soundtrack. Great. It's on the, uh, awesome. Well, My House Made of Dawn. There's 17 tracks on there. And it's like nine ninety nine on on Amazon. Oh yeah, so, I think I've seen it on there. Yeah, and and it's it's awesome. I mean, um, we'll put a link so, to I that think, on our uh, yeah. show d uh, description, so yeah. that people can. We'll put yeah. a link to your Amazon uh, show, uh, Dark Realm, and then a link to um, the soundtrack. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. You'll be able to see that. So, yeah, we we'll, we'll get it, and then if you, you have links then. We'll send you a link right to uh, Dark Realm on Amazon, and there'll be a link in there for the DVD for the collectors and mm -hmm. stuff if you want it on DVD, because that has all the extras oh, you yeah. can't get online anywhere oh, else. Most definitely, and I've watched all the extras. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's got two behind the scenes, which are really fun. Yeah, they are. It was, it was fun to watch. And then I think there's even a part that has some commentary, too, right? Yeah. Um, the director, Vincent Belanchio, yes. and I, who's, who's also in the movie, he's, he's my fellow actor he he directed and then Vinny and i co-wrote and co-produced the movie yes and then i started and, and put together the illusion show and then you know he directed and ran the crew and everything so we we we, we did a, a kind of a co-production on that through mm -hmm. his uh through his company d movies and and Vinny's horror pedigree goes all the way back to roger corman and he's in uh roger corman's sorority house massacre back in the 80s mm, okay. and 
and we met on a movie for our friend John Lachago, who wrote and directed this movie called Blood Gnome, and <laughs> Blood Gnome's got its own kind of a weird horror pedigree and kind of a <laughs> kind of a, a, a cult fetish kind of uh, a, a, a audience and feel to it in in the in the, the horror movie space because it is a horror movie that is set in the BDSM underground. Oh, about gotcha. these little blood drinking gnomes. It's awesome. <laughs> and it's super kinky. And if you're looking for a weird horror film about little dr- blood drinking gnomes that uh, stars <laughs> me, Blood Gnome. Go find Blood Gnome. You'll, you will, you'll be glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was written and directed by our mutual friend, John Machago. And that's where I met Vinny, and then we became friends after that and worked on several other things like uh, Magus and Bioslime and, and a few other projects together. Sure. And then, you know, Vinny came to me and said, hey, let's shoot your show. And I said, let's not just shoot the show. Let's make a movie out of it. Let's, let's you know, anybody can do, you know, it's so typical to do like a magic special mm-hmm. kind of thing where you're shooting the show and, you know, in front of a live audience. I'm like, well, let's take that and then let's mix it with a narrative and make an actual movie out of it. And yeah, that was really cool. Would, Thank you. It, there's nothing else like it. No, there, there isn't. No, there's not. Because like it you have a whole story it twisted in with your show that's going along with it. Yes. Yeah. And it's loosely inspired by uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis, who is the godfather of gore. Uh, Herschel made a movie called um, uh, the, the Wizard of Gore in, like, 1971. Gotcha. And it's loosely based, some of it, on The Wizard of Gore. And... And so it's kind of inspired by that. But other than that, there was not, it doesn't have all of that live. It has a few seg- segments of magic in front of a live audience. But the, the actor playing, playing you know, Montag the Magnificent in the movie, who winds up being this, this psycho killer magician, uh, is, is, uh, is that actor is not you know, a trained and lifelong you know, magician illusionist like, like I am. Mm-hmm. It, because it was like, like I said, it was it was the magic that it brought me around to the acting, you know, which was funny because then being in horror films was kind of, you know, one of the things that inspired me to go in that direction in mm-hmm. the first place. So it kind of circled around nicely. Cool. And, and that's why, you know, after being in all these other horror films and making Dark Realm was kind of a no brainer. It was like, you know, let's, you know, we partnered with Vinny and we made that. And you can see a lot of these examples of, of how I use the incantations and everything oh, because there's so much of the show in that yeah it's like you went to basically one of your shows and then you get to watch a movie while you're watching your show exactly. <laughs> it's kind of exactly. it's kind of neat that way really, yeah it's pretty groundbreaking in that because yeah. there's nothing in the magic space because if you look at magic movies or if you look at horror films mm-hmm. about magic nothing else is like it and uh-huh. that's i that was again was something i wanted to create that was like something that you know just hadn't been done and that makes it a different movie, mm-hmm. you know. So if, if for people looking for like a traditional horror film, that's not it. Mm-mm. But if you're looking for something that 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 is, you know, and it gets a lot of high marks for being not a typical stereotypical formulaic horror film. Yeah. And if you're looking for something that's outside of that typical horror film box, that would be Dark Realm. Yes. You know, you, you, you definitely want to check it out if you're looking for things that are. Uh, it's something that's atypical yes, of so much of what's d- in the market. Definitely original and very artistic. So, thank you. You're well, that was the idea. Is to keep it. It was really. I mean, it, it's like you know, it's like a a uh, an art house horror film is mm-hmm. kind of how I would. Yeah, that's perfect. It. Yes. Yeah, that's a good word. I think word. that's the best way to kind of describe Dark Realm. It took me a while to get around into that language, but I'm like, yeah, it's really, it's not just an indie horror film that's different. Mm-hmm. It, it really is kind of more in the realm of art house. Yeah, horror. yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there definitely yeah. is. Because, like I said, there definitely was the artistic thing. So the art house, that's a perfect way to describe it. Yes, and that, that's what I liked about it, too. Because, you know, I was kind of like, you know, it was like, well, it's kind of a horror thriller, and it's got live performance, and it's it's also, you know, kind of an art film. Yes, but most it's definitely. Like, then, 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 you know, so then you put that in the blender, and what you get out then is, like, <laughs> you know, art house horror. <laughs> like I put it in the blender. <laughs> Put it in the blender and that's what you get. Yeah. And it's a tasty, tasty drink. <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway with the music, so some of it is I, I mean when I when we were creating those things for Dark oh, for Dark Realm and I and I needed to replace all that, that very expensive high end music that 
you would have to license for that. We didn't have the budget to license mm -hmm. the, the big name music. Sure. Uh, so I went in, and like I say, a Royal Voltaire and um, and you know, Sinister Fate, uh, Jet Noir, The Damn Bats, Thorn Fetish. There are a lot of the indie bands that are in there, <laughs> but most of the, most of the music is done by House Made of mm -hmm. Dawn. And I went to them and said, "Okay, this is what this is the song that I'm." using for this illusion on stage usually let's make something that has that kind of vibe mm -hmm. and so they did then custom make oh, a cool. lot of those songs that are in there one of them is, is you know the other one that you've got mm -hmm. uh called dark and sticky sweet which plays into the dark sticky fun because mm -hmm. i said i'm like you got to write me one song that, <laughs> that has dark and sticky in the lyrics and, I, <laughs> and then they're like done awesome <laughs> and he did it for me and so that became Dark and Sticky Sweet, which you'll see on the castle illusion in in Dark Realm, mm -hmm. which many times, you know, when I'm, when I'm usually using in, uh, in a live setting, uh, I was using, you know, uh, the, the cover of Tainted Love by Marilyn Manson mm -hmm. for that. And he made me Dark and Sticky Sweet, which has these great vocals by, by Danny from his band, and she's his female vocalist. And it's really, uh, it's, it's an awesome song, and it fit perfectly. You know, yeah, in, the, in, awesome. in the context of the illusion, and that then, uh, in what you've got, there is a special version that's not even on the soundtrack. You can only get this from me when you sign up on my email list, uh -huh. which you can do, you know, through my social media or through my website, FitzgeraldRealm.com. Uh, but this version of Dark and Sticky Sweet is called the Realm Lord Remix. Oh and yeah, has, I've heard that one. Yeah, and 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 that's what I sent you is the yes. other one. Uh, and that has audio drop-ins throughout the song, um, like an industrial track, and it's got all these audio drop-ins from the movie dialogue. Mm -hmm. So it's a special, you know, kind of remix of it, which goes in and gives you more of a feel for the movie. And it's sure. got some of the some of the poetry we're talking about. Yeah, he actually mixed right into that, which is awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So the incantations and also just you know, also specific lines of dialogue. Are, are throughout that that track and if you want to get that you, you you get that mp3 uh when you sign up on my email list and it's perfectly the email list i'm guessing is free to sign up for so it's a good free it's goodie. absolutely free you get yes. you get that as a free gift as a thank you from me to you when you sign up there you and go you can do that on my no on strings my website, it's on my totally Facebook free <laughs> it's completely free no cost to you you get free music <laughs> Which is awesome in remix, and that's the only place to get that song uh, is from me. And you can't get it on the soundtrack; it's not available anywhere else online. You can only get it uh, and, get it when you sign up. What was the web URL uh, again? Uh, FitzgeraldsRealm.com. There you go, FitzgeraldsRealm.com. And, and you can sign up there, or through my Facebook page, which is under Ron Fitzgerald's Realm, or even on my YouTube. If you go to the YouTube channel in the banner art up above. There's a little yellow button up there. You can click that, and it'll it'll take you to the sign up page as well. Yeah, uh, cool. And so we remember too, if you want to see some of these examples of things, uh, you can see them on my my YouTube channel as well. You're just all over the place, Ron. Uh, you gotta be out there, you know, <laughs> out there cranking out content because when we when we got went into lockdown and everything, <laughs> yeah, I had to take everything I was doing, all the live shows, everything had been canceled. Like, like it is for everybody. Oh, yeah. And at that point, it was, it, it, you know, it, I was like, great. We just do a pivot and work on everything online, which mm -hmm. is, you know, putting more content, building up and using the YouTube channel and social media. And then I've been doing a lot of live streams and everything as well. And you can see the archived live streams on on my YouTube channel awesome. as well. That's around there. Yeah. Yeah. So support, help support another artist because he, too, has had lots of things canceled and the artist and entertainment industry really needs help right now well yeah go in and you know get on there and you know uh, buy some merch uh you get a dark realm dvd buy a t-shirt something uh come in uh and when watch and enjoy and you can even uh hit the tip jar the virtual tip jar uh while we're doing some live streams and stuff because that that is largely you know what i'm i'm doing to, to pivot uh where my my income comes from from the show and everything yeah and i'm also also we're putting together we were we're going to be doing some uh virtual streaming shows and mm -hmm. things like that 
with some uh, some of the upcoming uh, you know horror and other events that that have gone online. I have been able to pivot and awesome. and package a version of the show which I can do for um, other horror conventions and, and and other other you know dark culture spooky and fun events that have gone online. Uh, that's you know we I started live streaming so we could uh, put that together as Most well. Most definitely. So I do have yeah kind of on the on the back end if anybody's out there listening that that, that, that you know books those kind of events and you're interested in, in uh, talking about that, you, you can, you know, again, Fitzgerald at FitzgeraldsRealm.com. You can email me, and um, and I can, you know, we'll talk yeah. about that with you. You can have, like, a huge about. Zoom party and have, you know, charge a little donation fee to get in, and you could do your show, and people could watch via Zoom. Yes. Well, you know, we thought about that, because you can, you can put up a... Uh, like a you know a, a, a ticket gate and, mm-hmm. you know and sell tickets to those events and things like that. Thus far, all the live streams I've just wanted everyone to, to come and partake and, and sure. enjoy because I'm trying to serve the audience and give something back and entertain people while we're all you know you know locked down and, and the events are all canceled and mm-hmm. everything everywhere. Yeah. And and so it was a way to, to kind of you know be back in touch and. And, and, and put out some entertainment for, for the audience and serve them like that. And then that way I just did like the virtual tip jar, which works through PayPal. Of course. That's great yeah. ideas. So, it, you know, we still got look, at least a couple months of winter left and can't go anywhere hardly anyway. <laughs> anyway, so you can go online and watch uh, Ron Fitzgerald's shows on YouTube. Uh, check out his website. You check out his Facebook page plenty to do during the next couple of months <laughs> there is there is you know and, and there's you know and there's more coming up we're we're going to be doing another one you know this month in january on, on live on the 23rd i don't uh-huh. know when this will air but on, on january 23rd mm-hmm. if you're seeing this later it'll be archived on there and this one will be themed around edgar Allan poe oh that's awesome <laughs> yeah because poe's birthday is january 19th yes and we decided to give it a, a poe Esque flavor yeah, that is very show. awesome and if you don't already know this and you've been listening to spoken word poetry podcast Edgar Allan Poe is also a very good poet and a horror storyteller so yes check him out absolutely and and I've got I've got a piece you know one of his pieces uh, you know I can do for you yes go um, ahead called El Dorado if you want to hear some poems. yeah go ahead all right here we go <clears throat> daily bedight a gallant night in sunshine and in shadow, had Jim Long singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old this night so bold, and over a heart, a shadow, fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek El Dorado. That was a pretty good reading. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I love these so many. Of course. How could you not? Yeah. And I like that one. I, I memorized that a long time ago, and it is something written towards the end of Poe's life. I mean, he died when he was 40. So yeah, I know. Like, it wasn't very much know, long. He wasn't around nearly long enough. No. He was more of the great stuff that he left us. But, man, it, it really stood the test of time. Oh, I mean, most he's, definitely. He's probably more famous now as a pop culture oh, I know. icon than he was even at the time. I mean, he would, you know, it, it's amazing. Yeah, people you know? in his time thought he was nuts and crazy. So, I mean. It's like, it's like Van Gogh. Yeah, exactly. totally. You know? Yeah. Just, I mean, his, his band goes worth millions of dollars now. Oh, and yeah. he would have never guessed that in uh-uh. time. Never. And I'm sure Edgar Allan Poe would have no idea what a, what a pop culture icon he is. At <laughs> yeah, I have T-shirts with Poe, and I have yep. those little uh, yeah. those little plastic, I can't think of their names right now, the little figures, <laughs> you know? I have a Poe yeah. one. You know, the big heads, yeah. the little body. Um, yep. I, I, the word has oh, left me. Head? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're like bobbleheads, heads, but there's another name for them, and I can't think of it right now. That's bad. Yeah. Oh, well. I call that yeah. COVID brain when you can't, because we've... <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, that's a new new term I came up with. Me and the pastor. I got me some of that pandemic brain. Yeah, pandemic brain, COVID brain, whatever you want to call it. Because yes, you know, I all the stuff that happened beforehand is kind of hard to remember because we've been through so much. So I forget things, and I'd say it's COVID brain. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, all right. So um. So, but anyway, I wanted to mention because we were talking about the music and House Made of Dawn. And Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. I, and, you know, and they're going to be on the show with me this next live stream. That's great. That uh, you'll be able to see, even if, if this is out after the fact, you'll be able to go to the YouTube channel and watch the archive of it. Let's see. Today is... And um, that's the great thing about archive. Oh, that, no kidding. Uh, yes. Uh, but but House Made of Dawn and I, we're working on a new album uh, where they've actually asked me to come in and do some vocal work on oh, it. Oh, so awesome. And I am doing Edgar Allan Poe. I have kind of this, this, you know, presentation, almost kind of a rap kind of thing uh -huh. of El Dorado that we're doing. And I actually, I just just uh, heard uh, the temp track. The, oh, so you know, cool. Underneath it, the, the kind of a, yeah, kind of the demo of it. And it's really fun and it's really exciting. So we're, we're doing that. There's going to be some other Poe um on the album and mm -hmm. we're also you know at, at doing some other another uh piece of music with him so i'm actually doing vocals on some of the pieces and oh. they've got um other songs that they have covered and originals that are going to be part of an all spooky uh, flavored uh house made of dawn new oh. house made of dawn album that'll be out later this year oh, that sounds fun it's really cool and it was something else that was perfect i mean they're based in l.a I'm in Chicago, so we've been doing this virtually, uh -huh. and it, it's actually something else that, you, that we could do, so we could, you know, uh, actually assemble it and put it together, you know, because I can I can record all, audio my audio here, send it to them, and mm -hmm. they get the vocals, and then he does all the mixing and everything, of and course. then he he will you know do some some demos and temp tracks and send to me, so I can you know have the pacing of the music. It's uh, it's exciting, and we're we're hoping to do more. Oh later. yeah, but, you, uh, uh, you know they'll, they'll be, you know keep watching for more about that. But that's it. Kind of pulls it all together. All of these kind of you know the, kind of the poetry and the incantations and the music and, and some of the custom music and some fun covers we decided to do together. Uh, there's another uh, cover I'm, I'm I'm doing with him of a, something that, that people will recognize. I'm not even going to say what it is right now. You mm -hmm. just you gotta wait for it. You'll sure. Just have yeah. to wait for it. Well, you know you've got to do that sometimes. You know you got to make things a surprprise. Yes. Well, yeah, I, don't, it, 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 I do. I want it to be a fun surprise, and it'll it is just it'll be a really nice update of it. I, it it's something that I I can't wait to get done and out there. But I'm also it's like, man, it was something that I would love to put a video together for it to promote it and put it on online and everything. And that 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 end of the project will will sadly have to wait for right now because mm -hmm. what I want to do with it is involved, and we would need to get people together, which is not you know happening for a little bit yeah that's when we have to are allowed to be around more people and all that good stuff yeah for the, for this one particular concept i you know I, yeah it's got to be it, there's got to be more people together on a, on a set together so it, it's yeah. nothing that uh how they put it at our council together. let's say our council meeting last night they put it when we all can be friends again <laughs> well we're friends we're just not <laughs> virtual friends <That's> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what they're saying. When we all can be buddies, we all be friends again. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, you know, and that's where the video chat's kind of fun. I mean, you know, it's the next best thing. You can at least see it. It is, of course. I've been doing some of that. Well, it's not bad, but it's not the same as, no. you know, as hanging out, you know, where you can taste somebody's vibe and, you know. I don't know. I can around. kind of pick up people's vibes just chatting, either audio or video. Yeah, that, well, that you can. That you can. But it's, it's just something. It still about isn't the same, though. In the room with people. Yes, oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, believe me, when this is all done, you know, uh, and it's, it'll be probably a couple of years from now, but when we can get back together for shows and concerts and go watch a movie on the big screen again mm -hmm. and stuff together, entertainment's going to boom like mad. Oh, in yeah. the live space again. Totally. People are hungry for it. We're social animals. We want to do it. That's why distancing and all of this, you know, uh, you know, sequestering yourself in your own bat cave at home is, mm -hmm. is difficult for people because yeah. we're social beasties and we want to go out and mix it up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 
Yeah. I, yeah. Although I do know that people will probably never take any of this for granted ever again. I, I hope they've learned and they won't. I don't well, know. I think it's a great, you know, it has hastened the the pivot to a lot of online delivery because it mm-hmm. changed the delivery uh, on everything. And, and I hope it brings some common sense also to yes. social media and the way we use it. And some civility, which yeah. it sadly lacks. Oh, <laughs> yes, it does, most definitely. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, but I'm glad we have it. I don't know they, how they did the last pandemic without the technology we have. Oh, gosh, and, I don't even want to think about how they did it. Uh, I, uh, that's just uh, civilized. Yeah, yeah. they did it. Yeah, they yeah, did, I know. We did it. Yeah, they um, did get through but, it, but... So I so I think you know as hard as this is for a lot of us and as, as, as devastating as it's been for people you know financially with losing mm-hmm. loved ones and friends and oh, everything yeah. otherwise I mean it could be it would be much 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 a million times worse if we didn't have the technology for to sure connected the way that we do I agree so I am I am very grateful for that yeah and uh, but yeah I, and I so I think it hastened everything online all the online shopping all the online communication. Uh, but I hope it does uh, do a nice little reboot and make people think about um, how to detox and de-stress, mm-hmm. you know, well, when they're under the guns for an extended for sure. period of time. And also um, uh, reassess your core values on some things. On Priorities. What really matters. Yeah. <laughs> What's really important. Because I, I think this really puts that right square in your face, too. Oh, Yeah. The one thing I have learned, I used to overwork myself and give myself these harsh deadlines and think everything had to be done now, now, now. I finally have learned to start slowing down a little. It took me a while. It took a pandemic to teach me that. Yeah, you have to breathe. I've been meditating for a good few years now, and I was glad I have that tool, that that resource for myself. And I would recommend it to anybody else. If if you if, you know if you're not meditating, if you'd like to learn, now's a great time to go find a good course and go learn and learn to meditate. It, it is it has made this a lot easier for me to be able to to, to uh, chill out yeah. that way and you know yeah and be able to just you know keep my meditate. Keep my, uh, yep, read some huh? good po- Sammy, meditate. Read some good poetry. Have some good tea or I don't know. Don't drink coffee unless there's no caffeine because you want to chill out. So I'd say it's a good peppermint tea or chamomile oh, tea. Uh, you know, or in, a journal. A lot of journaling. Yes. There you go. Yes. And, well, yeah, it's, it would be, I mean, since we are sequestered uh, and things, uh, you know, meditation, the journey in, um, exploring, you know, the inside of you, you know, and those those core values and, and other things and your creativity, it's a good time for that. I mean, because mm-hmm. when I looked at this, I just said, you know, when people were bored at home, just, you know, just binge watching uh, telly, we, we, we've all done a bit of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good to, to just kind of veg and just be entertained for a bit, too. Uh, but... Uh, you know, it, it is. It has been one of those things where it's like, I have, you know, I have come up with with more things to do and more projects than ever. Oh, I bet. Because they were things that that were that, that it got kept getting pushed back. Which now that I have the time, and you know, just working out of the bat cave, here, I can work on all of those things. Mm-hmm. And it's been great for that. So Most I don't know definitely. why anybody out there says if you're bored, you are not. <laughs> You are not exploring your options. If For you sure. Don't, you don't be bored. You can do more than just binge watch. It's a great time to learn something. It's a great time. I mean, you don't even have to spend money on a course. If you're interested in something, go binge watch the hell out of YouTube. Yeah, no the kidding. Tutorials and things that are on there. <laughs> Tons of them. It's completely free, and you'll you'll you will actually learn things. I've learned a lot yes. of things through there and through some of the courses uh-huh. that I've taken while I've been you know. In watching so, Ron Fitzgerald YouTube channel is completely free. Well, yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of entertainment right there, you know, <laughs> right there. Oh. Uh, so we've offered a lot of tips towards the end of this, and we've learned a lot about yeah. how you have wrote, come either wrote or you found like in the public domain, of course. Um, you mm-hmm. know, all your um, incantations and, and poetry and all that, and how you've come up with all your music. So hopefully, towards the end of this, people understand why I had you on this, the Spoken Word Poetry Podcast, Meet the Author. Thank you. Yeah, I have Meet the yeah, Author series, I it was Meet the Artist. Thing. When you asked me, I was thrilled that you did because I I love talking about that end of it, which everybody wants to focus on the other end, on the visual oh, and, of the and, and everything else. Um, so thank you You're for, welcome. 
you know, recognizing that and bringing me on to talk about that. No problem. I, I love being able to talk about the other elements in, in the art that I make mm -hmm. because it is it is very layered. I mean, there's there, there's 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 storytelling and there's there's audio, there's music, and then there, there's the visual, and then there's the performance and, and even the the acting end of it because mm -hmm. being an actor also helps in the way I uh, present those. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was happy to bring another another set of eyes to how your show is seen so well i think well plus you being a, a fellow artist mm -hmm. of a different discipline that's always fascinating to be how other artists you know take it in and consume it and process it mm -hmm. and you know like you say it, it, what you, what what people you know what resonates with them what they take away from it. it's like josh really didn't notice you know mm -hmm. the you know the incantations and the the poetry in it, mm -hmm. but you because yeah. that's part of what you do. It is that yeah. you know uh, you know that stood out to you. So th that that's great to know. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Um, anything else you want to add, or did we get everything? Well, and I, I mean, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Mm -hmm. Do you need another piece of uh, you know poetry well, from the I hear I hear your voice cracking a little. We're going on almost an hour, and I don't want to hold you hostage. Yeah, I'm just you know, I'm a little. I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I need to clear my throat. I've got, I've got my brand new uh, 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 Realm mug down here. Oh, uh, gotcha. Part of the, part of the new merch line. <laughs> I'm, I'm sipping some green tea out of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, green tea, that's good for you. That's good stuff. Great. For you. Yeah. So, I drink a lot of green tea. Uh, oh, and I was going to say, too, you were talking about peppermint tea. Yes, peppermint tea, good, yes. Especially, you know, in clearing throat really. Uh -huh. Here's a great, like, hot toddy recipe if you're out there. Uh, a big, a big giant well mug full of uh, peppermint tea. Make you brew some peppermint tea. Leave it in there for a good five minutes. Let it get really strong. Uh, and then uh, you're going to put uh, a little a bit of uh, brown sugar in it. Oh wow! Three tablespoons of absinthe and and a little bit of uh, vanilla almond milk to taste. And you have got yourself a hot toddy. Oh my god! That's very pleasant. I never yeah. heard of brown sugar in with tea. Yes. Wow. Because especially the absinthe is also, in, in the absinthe ritual, which you'll also see in Dark Moon <laughs> Realm, there's a, there's a whole scene with the absinthe in there. Uh, because there's this great mystique and it's considered the artist, you know, kind of alcohol. Yeah. And that, that was, and, I, and it was funny because when we shot it, everybody on set wanted to try it uh -huh. because they'd never been exposed to it and been around it. So the, and the absinthe ritual, it, you, you are pouring the alcohol over a sugar cube and you're lighting it on fire to kind of caramelize oh, that, that sugar, yeah. and then you're, you're 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 then pouring water on that, and then doing what they call the luging. You're luging it all together with the alcohol, the water, and the sugar together, and it gives it kind of this milky green color then. Oh, and wow. that's that's all part of the absinthe ritual. And I just love that kind of ritual huh. about the drink as well, which uh -huh. also to me just kind of sets it apart. It's just like. That's part of the mystique of absinthe, and it being the artist's drink, because you know, around the turn of the last century in Paris, Toulouse Lautrec and all those crazies were all these great artists, and they were all very, you know, into a lot of degenerate behavior, <laughs> and they loved their out their their absinthe, you know, and and that I just I, I just love that. And the oh, fact wow. that it has this whole ritual around it made it magical to me. Of I course, guess. yeah. Huh. So, so, so that's got its own place in dark realm. So the absinthe, and it's very bitter on its own. Mm -hmm. So you have to put mix it with something else, and and you know in that and there there's some sugar cubes. So mm -hmm. with with that, I thought, well, what could I substitute in here? And that little bit of, of brown sugar helps the absinthe. It sweetens the tea. Gotcha. And with that little bit of vanilla almond milk, it's try it, people. You'll thank me later. Oh. It'll it'll be in my recipe book of uh, hot toddies later. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, vanilla almond milk is just good to drink by itself anyway. That's good stuff. I, I yeah. I, I love it a lot. I love yeah. it in coffee and, and other things. Oh, yeah. Actually, actually, I found this, this really awesome. It's a, an almond milk caramel creamer. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, people, try that out. Yeah. That's Ooh. good stuff. That just sounds mm -hmm. yummy. <laughs> See, because I've it's tried thinking. those, because I'm like, I can't drink a lot of regular milk, so I've had, like, mm -hmm. the, the almond stuff and lactate, so, like, the caramel, yeah, caramel, um, yeah, that'd be great. Try that yeah. out. You'll find it. Yeah. Very cool. See, we don't, we, we're getting recipes on our podcast. Well, see, darks, <laughs> we're your dark, sticky, helpful hints today, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that that's a first for right here. Yeah. <laughs> We've truly gone all over the place. Just, just we have. Oh my gosh, there's nothing wrong with that. It it makes it the uh, podcast interesting that way. So yeah, absolutely, it, it's it's very rich and dense in many 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 ways. So and usually uh, when you and I talk, we go in all different directions anyway. <laughs> we are so Ariana. We are some chatty mofos now, aren't we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> that uh, we are, and that's perfect. Yeah. He's a, he's a great guest. I like having him on theme shows, so it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, anytime. I, I, I'm thrilled you had me on again and yeah. we have to talk about all this. So, sure. But for those of you out there listening, please, you know, make contact with, with, with both of us, you know, and comment on the show. Let us let us know what, what you liked about it or if uh, you have any questions about anything. Of course. You know? I and will so. get this streaming on YouTube as well, and if I can get a little video thing, I can send it on to you and you can put it on your channel if you'd like to. I, I absolutely so. will. I will. I will share the hell out of it <laughs> when you get it to me. Yeah. And uh, and sure. make sure that everybody you know and 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 my uh, dark sticky tribe gets to uh, get a listen to All it. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll distribute it out there. We'll make sure everybody gets to see it. And I'll send <laughs> it out on the email list. And remember, <laughs> if you want to get on the email list, go sign yes. up on it. And uh, it's yes. Fifteen dot com. Correct. Com. Yes. yes. And sign up and, for the email uh, and get the free MP3. There, yes, of uh, Dark and Sticky Sweet, the Realm Lord Remix. The only place to get it, and uh, I, uh, you're going to play it for him, too. Yes, so. you'll get to hear it, and then you can own it. <laughs> it can be yours for the low <laughs> price of nothing! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron, you hang tight. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, it is great having Ron on the show, and appreciate everyone listening. And always stay tuned to Spoken Word Poetry Podcast. Have yourself a good day. If you are enjoying listening to Spoken Word Poetry Podcast, then you just might enjoy poetry written by Ariana R. Cherry. You can buy her books on Amazon. Visit her website at arianarcherry.wordpress.com. Are you suggesting some dark sticky fun? My dear, think so. Dark sticky fun. My dear, think so. Dark sticky fun. My dear, think so. Dark sticky fun. Is our victim ready yet? Yes, Master. Shall we begin? Yes, Master. Indeed we shall. So get ready to lean over and fight for what you love, because this is dark, sticky, vampire, fun! Hit! Blind these eyes And I'll slip on this disguise Something to